April 20th, 22. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your, your determination to seek God each and every day so that you might become the person that God intended you to be from the very beginning. Let's get started. Talking all week about fresh starts inspired by our Easter Sunday and recognition of the great blessing that Jesus has given us. That new opportunity to begin again. That we celebrate that opportunity to begin again quite often. Whether it is a new struggle or that we are feeling weary, we all need a fresh start from time to time. And today is a celebration of that opportunity for a fresh start. A new day is dawning. I want to talk today about favor. How do we obtain favor? What are the strategies involved in gaining trust, gaining a new relationship, gaining new business? gaining more resource to accomplish the things that God has given. Who do we have to talk to? Who, who do we have to network with? Well, the thing is, as demonstrated in the early chapters of Acts, the most important strategy, the most important item on the checklist is to do the things that God has asked of us. And those things seem simple and perhaps insignificant. But we've been talking now for a little while about the power of prayer and believing that we can Harness the power of God by simply seeking his will and trusting that he desires to bless us. So to gain favor, the simplest strategy, and not even a strategy, is to remain centered in your relationship with God. And that's what we witness here in the beginnings of the church. They were completely lost, if you will, in mourning for, for the loss of their leader, their savior, disbanded, disillusioned, and then God shows up. And the small group that is left is encouraged, empowered by the Holy Spirit, and recognize that the simple things that God has asked of them pay great dividends. Two types of favor that we are seeking is, number one, God's favor. His hand of blessing, his hand of protection, that intimate relationship that he offers that we desire. And of course, the other favor that helps us accomplish our mission, helps us make inroads into the communities that we serve, is favor amongst men. Both may feel equally challenging, a relationship with God because he is the creator of all things. Why would he have time for us? Favor with man because 
we've already discussed that the light has come into the world and those who have things to hide don't want to embrace the light. And if we represent the light, then there's, there's tension there. How will we ever overcome that tension? As we'll learn today, the beautiful thing is that when we trust in God, He navigates and dispels that tension. When there is favor to be gained, inroads to be had, impact to be made, if we will simply put our trust in Him, we will gain favor when we weren't expecting to gain favor. We need to trust God more and do the things that he has asked us to do. Acts 2, 46. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad, sincere hearts praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. They chose to gather together. They chose to place the kingdom first. They chose to embrace the ways of God and one another. They chose to be the church. And in doing so, God created the inroads that they desired to see and needed so they could accomplish what they were called to accomplish. That is my desire for connections that we would set aside the things of the world and truly embrace our relationship with God that would give the opportunity for God to move before us and we would gain favor and make an impact much greater than we can imagine. We cannot do it on our own. There is no business strategy that is sophisticated enough to accomplish the task, but there is a God greater than all things that can. And if you truly believe that, then getting back to the basics of gathering together and taking care of one another with sincere hearts will accomplish great things. Just a little bit down the road in Acts 4, this coming together is tested. You might recall the, the beggar at the gates beautiful and Peter and John performing a miracle and the man gets up and walks. And although they caution him to not tell anyone, he certainly goes and tells everyone which brings Peter and John on the radar of all those powers that hung Jesus on a cross. Those powers, just a few months earlier, Peter and John and the rest of the disciples were in fear of, certain that any moment that they would bust through the door and arrest them and crucify them. Instead, Peter and John and the rest of the disciples in this small group that now is growing and growing said, we don't need to fear. We are in God's hands and he will bring us favor. This stirring up that happens at the gate beautiful is an opportunity to trust in that. And curiously enough, as Peter and John are brought before the Sanhedrin and 
questioned and you know facing off against the same group of people that that crucified Jesus the sanhedrin is confounded they don't know how to face off against Peter and John they don't know how to speak against what they can clearly witness that this this beggar that has been known this man who has been crippled forever and and they all are aware of is now standing before them they don't understand how peter and john can so eloquently plead their case aren't they these fishermen from the backside of nowhere, now they're coming before us and God's favor was upon Peter and John. And it confounded the Sanhedrin and they were released. That is the power of doing the things that God has called us to do. On their release, Peter and John went back to their own people and reported all the, that the chief priests and the elders had said to them. When they heard this, they raised their voices together in prayer to God. Sovereign Lord, they said, you made the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything in them. That's all we have to do in order to gain favor. I know it feels like the, the deck is stacked against you. I know it feels that stepping out and saying that you are a follower of Christ feels even dangerous. In this age, in this cultural shifting that is going on when people are canceled for much less than saying they believe in God, who would want to step up and represent? How could we ever gain favor? How could we ever have a voice in this culture that is so different? And I say to you, if we will trust God as the disciples trusted God, Empowered by the Holy Spirit, we can accomplish tremendous things. That is my prayer. That is my belief. And I hope that you will stand at my side as we press into that. We have an impact to make in our community. We have people to save we need God's favor. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your favor. We didn't earn your favor. You love us. And you desire to see the world saved. We can recall a time when our thoughts were against you as much as theirs are. But you made a way and you showed favor and grace and mercy. Do it again, Lord. There is a longing in our culture a longing to be loved and recognized, a longing to be valued. The world is offering numerous substitutes. 
but the truth is found in you. In order to reach this ever-changing culture, Lord, we will need your favor and we will need inroads into this community of ours. It seems like an impossible task, Lord, but nothing is impossible for you. So as we dedicate ourselves to gathering together and seeking your will and worshiping you, we ask, Lord, that you would give us the favor needed in the community, a voice into the lives that we seek for your glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Ooh, we're on Wednesday. Praise God. Got Thursday, Friday left. See you back here. Know that I love you and I miss you. And please, good, 